so getting students to think about the impact um, of, uh, you know, for example, they want to leave home at some point. Um, they might want to get married. They might want to start a family. They might want to work abroad. They might want to go back and increase their study or to take a take their study in a different direction. So there's lots of things they might want to do um, during their career. And so thinking about a career path, they're not going to know what their career path is. They can't necessarily plan for it. All they can do is the, the best they've got with their current self-knowledge. Um, but I did want to share this article with you, um, which, is, um, which is about graduates, those graduating in 2021. <clears throat> and that sort of shows a, a, a sort of different types of career path that you could go to. And it looks at it graphically, which I thought might be quite interesting to um, to have a look at. So just let me find this. So I'm gonna put this in the Moodle um, documents for this module. So this is an article, um, LinkedIn, I don't know if you use it in Laos, it's a, like a professor, professional networking um, site, website that everybody uses in the UK and I think it's quite common in sort of Western Europe and the US. I'm not quite sure how common it is in Asia. You maybe have equivalents, but basically it's, you know, I've got my, you know, my equivalent of my CV or my job details on there. And if anybody is looking, you know, they might find me through LinkedIn um, because I've got the right sort of experience and what have you, qualifications and everything. Um, or if I apply for something, that could be the first place somebody goes to. So it's kind of like a, a professional um, Facebook, if you like, professional sort of form of Facebook. So this is the LinkedIn um, chief executive officer um, talking about um, advice for new graduates. Um, so I think it might be a useful article to sort of share with your students and to talk to them about. Um, you know, he's talking about the um, unpredictability of coming out when you um, coming out in the time of COVID and, you know, hiring rates are now going back up again. At least there are, are in sort of um, the, the sort of countries that LinkedIn is, is common in. But um, he also talks about lifelong learning, which I think is interesting. So it's all about this thing about um, changing careers and the fact that you need to keep on learning, you do your degree, that's not the end of the story. Lifelong learning, you have to carry on learning new skills, you maybe need to move into different areas as careers evolve, <coughs> develop expertise in different areas. So you don't stop learning um, just because you finished your formal education. Um, and it talks about networks, which we've talked about as well. Um, and that's one thing that LinkedIn prides itself on is sort of being able to build your network because you can link with people that have got similar interests. Um, and then he talks about, um, you know, the change and, and things that are going to happen during your, your career. So he, he sort of maps out a typical, you know, people think it goes very linearly. You know, you go, you, you increase in terms of seniority, you know, you, you get your internship, you get your associate, you get your manager, you get executive. So you sort of gradually sort of moving up through the, uh, the ranks. But quite often careers aren't like that at all. And possibly even more so now. You know, you come out of school, you do some work study, you get your associate position um, as it was up here. But then you lose your job, you know, get made redundant. And so you kind of back down again in terms of kind of like seniority because you're unemployed. And so you decide to work for a year abroad and then you decide to go back into um, college, university, um, maybe do a master's degree. So you go back and, you know, if this is kind of like income or seniority or whatever, you know, you're sort of taking a backward step. But we, you, this is the linear um, scale along here is the timeline. So you go back to school and then you go back into work. But now you've got back in, you know, you come up to here again because you've got more qualifications, you've got more experience, you've had a bit of a setback, but you come in as a manager. And then you decide to change careers. You're bored with what you're doing. Um, and so you do some online learning courses and then you go into being an entrepreneur and you know your income shoots up because you're an entrepreneur or whatever. So I just thought that was an interesting graphical way that you could use that as being an example to talk through with students that not all careers, some careers will follow this linear line, but quite often, particularly, you know, sort of currently, 
um, and moving forward, it's likely that careers are going to be um, much less linear and you know, you're going to be have ups and downs in your career, you're going to have shocks in your career. Um, losing your job isn't the worst thing that can happen in the world. It can be a, a, a motivator for doing something very creative, you know, going back into learning, deciding to go and work abroad, you know, sort of taking some time out, um, you know, and uh, people might have Im similar impacts from life events, from having a family or, you know, having caring responsibilities or suddenly having to move um, location or whatever. So, so I thought that was quite a useful... Um, short article um, which might be uh, interesting for your students to see and that the sort of concept of um, you know the career pathway uh, can be quite an interesting one now <clears throat> obviously that's you know the chief executive of LinkedIn you know and that's his kind of perspective but I think it would be useful if um, your students could hear about real people's career paths now you could talk about your own career path with your students if you felt confident enough, if you were happy to do that. That's quite a personal thing. Um, and if you were willing to do that, you'd need to, I think, rather than just sort of starting and talking about what happened to you, you think about it in a structured way. And I put some questions down in the um, in the module, you know, about you know, what did you want to do when you first graduated? You know, what was your first job like? What were the positives? What were the negatives? You know, what did you learn in your first job? How did you get your second job? You don't have to follow these particular questions, but I think you need to kind of structure it and show how life, how your career has progressed and what sorts of factors have influenced your career. So it might be that you had a, a mentor, somebody who was very interested in you as a person in your career, who helped you along the way, who guided you and sort of, you know, put you on the right lines for different things and helped, you know, helped you talk about your, your development. And that can be very helpful if somebody's got a mentor. Um, but it might be that you've had particular life events, you know, maybe somebody in the family was taken ill and you had to go back home to look after them or whatever that that can have an impact as well so life events impact your working life and you don't always get to do what you want to do um but the idea is that talking talking a, a real person talking about their career maybe being prepared to answer questions about their career and how they made different decisions can be very helpful in, and insightful for students so you might want to do it with your students you might not be prepared to do that i mean one thing to think about maybe would be to swap over different groups of students you know so that you're doing some students you don't know um but the other the other thing to do from that to build you know that is to give them an idea and it would only need to be you know 20 minutes you know this is this is kind of and maybe you start off with one of those graphs of your career to show, show how the career has worked yeah you know where you've gone back and done retraining um, if you if you have or you know sort of you know did you take a job at the same level or did you take a job that was at a lower level because it suited you to get into a particular organization or it suited you to get to a new location so it's about students being able to see that yes there's decision making they can decide about things and they can make choices but there's also a role of chance plays and also external factors, things that you can't control influence your job, your, your career path as well. I think once they've actually heard one, you know, one example of a career path, you could then ask your students to do the exercise that I put down in the module, which is basically to identify somebody in their family or a friend, a friend of the family who, who they would talk to about their own career maybe that might be somebody remember we talked about building their networks so that maybe they identify somebody who is useful and has got a similar career in the area that they want to work in in their network and they think about five let's say open-ended questions so rather than letting the person ramble on about their career path which might or might not be useful the student has to think about five questions they want to ask them and they have to be open-ended in other words, they have to, you can't answer them yes or no. You know, can you tell me how you got your first job or how did you decide what area you wanted to work in? You know, to me, open-ended, which is inviting some sort of discussion. 
So they identify five open-ended questions and then they conduct a proper interview, a semi-structured interview with the person they've identified. And they make notes during the interview. So they're, they're like sort of like a, a newspaper reporter gathering information. And then they do a very short report, maybe one side or two sides report um, of this career path. Um, and they identify th three key influences you know, so was it a key influence? The degree they decided to study was a mentor a career a, a key influence? Was a boss a career, key influence? Was their family a key influence on that? So they're kind of like just trying to for somebody else, somebody that they they don't necessarily know particularly well. Um, they're, they're sort of looking at what has affected their career path, and that can be very insightful exercise for students. And then when you get back into class after they've done it, you know, just picks three students out at random to maybe read their report and start drawing out some general um, uh, messages from that. So the important thing of this exercise is that they, they go and they interview somebody, they think about the questions, they do the interview, they do the report, that's the learning part. You don't have to check, you know, as long as they've done it, that's fine. You know, they, they've got the learning from that. Um, but but you can have a sort of like a group discussion based on three reports. You don't need to read out every report, but based on three reports, maybe just at random. And then just note down some key influences that people have discovered, that people have described on their careers. Um, and, you know, have those on the board and students can note those down. And it just gets them thinking about, about those kind of um, the knowns, the unknowns, you know, the things that they can control, the things they can't control around their career. Okay, <clears throat> so that's that's sort of the, the, the type of things that you might do around motivators and around, you know, career development to get students sort of thinking about those kinds of areas. But I think at this point, we've got to the, the situation where, you know, you've done quite a lot of work with your students. They've had a fairly comprehensive introduction to how to get a job and how to increase their chance of getting employment and the next thing is to kind of get them off um you know inputs from you and exercises that you're giving them and get them onto the real work of actually getting the job now obviously this is going to be particularly relevant to final year students that are going to be going out into the world in maybe a couple of months time or even um third year students in preparing for it so you need to sort of give them a signal, a clear signal that now it's over to them. You know, this is not something anybody else can do. They have to do it for themselves. So I think you need to um, sort of signal that fairly clear to your students. And one, this is quite a scary step for students. It's kind of like, um, you know, for any, you know, like any of us, if we're worried about something, if we're scared of something, if it's a bit, you know, um, daunting if it's a bit scary we kind of avoid doing it so your students won't be any different um, they will be doing that as well they'll be avoiding doing it so one thing I would suggest at this this last final point where you kind of say okay we've done an awful lot of preparation for you you know we've helped you with interview skills develop interview skills how to prepare for the interview how to do your CV how to do your application form all these sorts of things we've done all that kind of preparation work now you've got to do you know you've got to take hold of this um and one way of doing that is to get them to develop their own action plan yeah their own plan for how they're going to get a job um and it's their responsibility it's their plan they've got to progress it but you can possibly give them some sort of help along the way now in terms of an action plan different people do it do action plans differently and there isn't one model that suits all some people just have a piece of paper and sort of write it down and whatever typically an action plan will have a structure um, but what you could do is you could do it you get a student started on an action plan to sort of say okay what do you you know you're at this stage now what other things do you need to do in order to get a 
into a position to apply for a job you know have you got a job you want to apply for yes no well if you haven't got one then the first thing you've got to do is you've got to research for a job but there's lots of other things you've got to do you might need to get your cv refined you know you might need to sort out you might need to think seriously about what sort of area of work you want to work in you might need to do a bit more work on your motivators you know there's all sorts of things that you might need to be doing so typically with an action plan you'll start off with kind of like oh there's loads of things to do and then you need to get those things organized you need to get them into some sort of structure and more most importantly you need to put a timeline on it so you need to give yourself deadlines for, for for doing each of those actions so i've just done a sort of sample action plan and i don't think it's up to you to to necessarily um you know make your students do it in a particular way i think asking them to produce an action plan giving them tools to do it and then asking to um to see you know to see the results and check the results but let me just share you know a, a sort of very um initial type of action plan which i just kind of sketched to sort of illustrate the sort of thing that hopefully you might expect to see from them <clears throat> okay so this is a starting point you know of a very simple action plan so you know and i've just put a couple of things in there to get this started so they could you know one of the things could be hopefully they'll have a draft CV from earlier on in the course um, but they'll need to finalize it so um, they might need to revise the draft to revise draft they might need to look at the presentation so in other words the spelling the grammar the punctuation all that sort of thing the tech you know that how it actually looks it's maybe a bit um, messy at the minute so it need me tidying up they may want to put referees in their CV so they need to check with their referees that they're happy and that's something they could be doing while they're still at university, even if they're not going to apply until after university to check with which tutors, which lecturers are willing to act as referees. They may need to go back and check their exact school exam results. I don't know if you do percentages or we do grades or whatever. Um, they may need to work on the enriching them to the CV. Yeah, we know we talked about interests and hobbies section to make sure that's right. You know, so there may be so basically we've got the overall task here of finalise the CV, but then try to break it down to the steps that you need in order to finalise the CV, in order to get it into a state where it's ready to send off to somebody. And then what's the timeline? Yeah. And then your notes might be, okay, what sort of supporting information, you know, do I need? You know, sort of asking referees permission. So you know they've got to identify who they've got to ask and they've got to actually ask them and maybe tick it off yeah and then you know identify three jobs to apply for so this is kind of like what's the what's the big thing that you're going to achieve at the end which is and this is the end of july you're going to achieve it um and then what steps have you got to take into order to progress it and typically what, what will happen is the students will you know they they should be able to do a kind of like a oh gosh i've got to do this i've got to do that got, you know, loads of activities and then organize it around particular themes and give themselves a deadline for it so i say lots of different ways of um doing an action plan some people like to do it as a spider diagram where you kind of like got it getting a job and then you've got lots of um you know sort of branches coming out of it so it's much more kind of creative thing and steps on the way to it it doesn't matter how they do it particularly um but generally speaking it's about sequential actions um and you could start with what's going to be what am i going to do by the end of this week what am i going to do by the end of the month um <clears throat> so you could start with a, a each student does a personal brainstorming activity and then starts to develop their action plan from there um i mean i would say that this is something that students need to do on their own in their own time and then maybe you give them a deadline for bringing in their first you know their action plan and you ask um, a couple of students if they want to volunteer to share their action plan um, and you know remember to, to sort of praise their action plan and talk about some good points as well as maybe some suggestions for improvement um, and to thank them because obviously if they're volunteering they've been quite brave to sort of share their action plan <clears throat> okay um, so once you've got students and once they've got an action plan then I mean it, all of this is kind of like transferring the ownership of the issues the the leadership on the issues has got to go to them from you um even if they're not going to start looking for a job until after they graduated they should be doing something now even if it's only little things that they can do while they're still at university um what i would suggest you do in terms of supporting your students is once they've got sort of the action plans or they've had the time to do the action plans is then just agree with your students a, a sort of checkpoint um 
slot and you might do that every week you might do it every two weeks you might do it every month that's that's kind of up to you and it's up to where this up to you where the students are um but a checkpoint you know very very quickly maybe spend 10 minutes in class 15 minutes maximum just say how you're getting on with your action plan it's just partly it's knowing that they're going to be asked um and it just kind of helps them as a bit of an aid memoir to sort of think oh yeah well how am i doing my action plan so it kind of forces them to go back and look at it um and, and at that point you know invite students to say what successes have you had you know what setbacks have you had because there'll be both and some students successes can inspire other students um some students might have got a job as a result which is great so that can be very inspirational for students and they might be willing to help others who haven't got a job yet um and also setbacks you know somebody's gone for an interview and they didn't get the job and it was all very depressing yes yes it all is all depressing but don't don't forget to remind them that they need to learn from the experience of not getting the job they need to reflect on it they need to get feedback if they didn't get feedback you know to find out you know why they weren't the chosen candidates so it can help you know this checkpoint thing as i say don't need to spend a long time on it but make sure your students are really clear remind them that you're going to ask them about um the checkpoints and about the action plan and how they're going with it okay so that's kind of like handing ownership over to your students if you like of um of taking their job search forward because in the end the only people that can do it is them you know they they're the only ones that can do it so in terms of the tasks for next week um have a look at what's in the um module um for career planning and if you're able to plan your lectures on career planning and um any suitable teaching materials and resources think about whether you're willing to share your career path with your students or whether you want to kind of do a swap with somebody um you know so that they're, they're sort of talking to people they don't know uh, somebody's talking to them um and if you're going to be sharing your career path with your students or other students then sort of make some notes and, and just make sure you've got a sort of structure to it um talk to your students about an action plan at the end you know about getting their action plan together they're going to need time to do that but then also about the the slot when you're going to regularly review and, and make sure it's a regular doesn't matter how often but but it's a regular slot and remind them beforehand that you're going to be doing it so they actually get pushed into doing some activity um okay so those are your kind of tasks they're set out at the end of the the module um section this this time and i do appreciate that because of your situation you might get some progress with it you might not but um ideally that's what you should be looking for okay just wanted to remind you that um next time is our um concluding seminar so we kind of like finished the input into the course now um you've got the draft handbook um in the moodle i'm going to be finalizing the handbook um over well i'll, I'll probably wait until after the concluding seminar because i'll get feedback from that um but i will be draft i will be finalizing the handbook and i'll be sharing that with nuol um probably by the end of july i would think um but we've got the final concluding seminar next time whenever that time is and that's the time when um, i'm going to be asking you to reflect on how you got on with career planning as we we normally do so what we did in this module but also looking more broadly you know how have you got on with the championship role obviously you know lockdown and covid has affected how things have progressed but how have you got on with the championship role how have you found the course you know have you you know, have you learned from it have you benefited from it um what what would you change about the course you know what what, what worked for you what didn't work for you in terms of the course so an evaluation of the course um but also if there's any particular aspects that you want me to go over again or you want me to do more in, input on then can i invite you to um, get in touch with dr santi <clears throat> or you can email me direct my email's in the the chat um and say pam please do whatever um and i will try and do that but try and give me a few days notice so i can prepare for it um one thing i was going to ask um dr santi's on the call um we were scheduled to do the next uh seminar on the 21st of july and i'm just asking if we can do it on the 14th instead or the 28th because i have a family event now on the 21st 
So we don't have to make a decision now, but I'm just flagging that up. Um, I guess Dr. Santi can confirm if that's possible to me separately rather than trying to do it online now. Okay. Um, right. That's all I wanted to say. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions or comments from anybody. Um, about, well, about anything really, about career planning or about the concluding seminar or, or anything else that we've covered. So don't forget you've got the, the chat if you want to do that or you can unmute yourselves, put your hands up or whatever. Hi there. Yes, hello again. Can I ask you about the seminar? Um, so what, what are we doing in the seminar session? You mean the next one? Yes, the next one. Yeah. Okay, so in the next one, it's kind of, it's a review of the whole program, oh, yeah? Okay. But Good. I can cover, if there's particular topics, yeah? Particular things that either I haven't covered in the area of employability, or there's particular things that people wanted me to go through again or do something mm -hmm. different on, yeah? I can yeah. spend a little bit of time doing that. But what I wanted to do was to um, have an opportunity <clears throat> to think back on the learning, your learning, hopefully, yeah, in the employability program, how you got on with the championship role. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. And also you. Yeah. evaluate different aspects of the program. You know, how did you find the handbook? How did you find the seminars? You know, you know what, what was yep. your overall feeling? So it's kind of an evaluation. So it's like a chance for us to talk about the course as well. But once I heard you point out the date, you know, it. Uh, because I, I have put the date for my uh, workshop already. So yeah. We have 14, we have, uh, you know, July 14, 21 and 28. <laughs> I heard right, you okay. the date, so it's crashed, you know, <laughs> on each other. So they all clash? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, I understand. Well, I'm not trying to rearrange the date in, in the seminar. I think Dr. Santi needs to tell me whether we can rearrange the date or not. As I say, it was scheduled for the 21st because we do them every two weeks to allow time oh, for the wow. okay. in between, yeah? Um, it was scheduled for the 21st, and I'm just asking if it's possible to change it. If it's not, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I'll do it on the 21st. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so next time, it's not, it's not so much any... It's not a topic as such. It's the whole course, the whole course and the championship yeah. role yeah. and the learning, you know, and it's a chance to reflect. And it's an opportunity if anybody wants anything else covered or covered again you know, or an explanation or to question anything, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you for the question. Okay, any other comments or questions for anybody? Uh, Dr. Pam? Yes. I think uh, for career plan, uh, when uh, graduates apply for jobs, they may try to be um, high performing uh, newcomers as much as possible. So they should be. Uh, uh, knowledgeable, have uh, high problem solving skills to, to do well in their job like that. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think you're absolutely right. Um, but I guess they also will be learning a lot in the workplace because yeah obviously they have to yeah i mean i think they have to make a good impression definitely yeah but they they also need to get used to working you know working with other people you know it's different from being a student it is different okay okay thank you okay thank you for your comments yeah very true yeah yeah anybody else 
Don't forget we've got the chat here if anybody else wants to type anything in. Hi, Dr. Santi. Yes, hi. Sorry, I just come to join the, meet the seminar. Just finished the meeting in the ministry. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. มรุติหกผ่านมาคิดว่าเป็นอะไรคิดหน้าหรือว่าขั้นต่อไปอาจจะมีการสรุปเนาะจากเนาะสรุปแล้วก็สุรนากันตื่นทั้งหมดยาว
ตัวเพิ่นบัววางแล้วเกิดจะเป็นสิบสี่สี่สิบสี่บุได้ก็จะเป็นอะไรเซาเตะประมาณนี้อ่ะอคืออันนะเออเริ่มจันเพิ่นทางซาวทางสิบสี่ซาวแปดเพิ่นก็เจอะมดสักอึดก็เจอะมดแล้วก็เลือกคันคนทางไลน์เอาตัวใดก็ไม่เอาแล้วสิบสี่หรือสับจับจับมุกเป็นยังสิบสี่สิบสี่เลยกันนี้สิบสี่เห็นเจอะจ้าคนอื่นแต่มันเล่าไว้ขึ้นเนาะอืมเล่าไว้ขึ้นเนาะแต่อาจารย์ท่านใดบนเขาสวดกับห้องตัวพิเตอร์เขาอันนั้นเบิ้งวิดีโอเนาะออนไลน์ลืมเนาะเพราะว่าเวิร์กช็อปจะเริ่มอ่าเขาจะเริ่มมงหนึ่งก็แสดงว่าอาจจะเข่าได้ตอนท้ายท้ายโอเคเจ้าก็ดีดีจ้าทำได้ก็ดีคุยคุยคุยจอยมาสุดท้ายกันเลยเพราะว่าโซเฮตีเด้อซิกซีก็ได้ครับก็ได้เราจะโอเคโอเคดรแพมส์เอ่อ many participants agree to Our seminar on fourteen. Uh, okay, that's fine. Yep, great. That's fine. Thank you very much for that. I will uh, confirm again by email so that uh, they can yeah. come back. Yeah. So say, same time on the fourteen. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. And if the time, maybe I think if. It it would be good if we can prepare state for participants. Yes. <laughs> yes, I think it would be good. Yeah. Um, when I asked, um, when I asked Jeff about that, um, they said it was best if the universities did certificates, and I can sign them. Yeah. You you can you you can decide uh, the, the, the template certificate template, and then we will decide who will sign. The certificate, I think. I... Okay. I mean, I I am not a desktop publishing person, so <laughs> they would be very simple certificates if I designed them. Okay, you can <laughs> you can make as you can. Okay. There are many available uh, templates online, I think, but you can choose the best one. But I thought maybe NUL might have a standard one. You know, with the uh, NUL. Okay, I, maybe I okay. I will, I will ask our compound if 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 he you know. Okay. I will ask the company. Yeah. Because I think it should have NUL, NUL um, logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. What we have. Okay. 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 So, any other questions from anybody? Otherwise, we meet on the fourteenth. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No question. Thank you so much, Dr. Pam. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks okay. for all your questions and comments. See you next time. Yeah. Okay. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. See you. Bye -bye.